I'm excited about this passage. I don't know about you. I know that Reverend Raynard, um, I'd like for you to open the prayer and let us jump in. Okay, be glad to. Father in heaven, we thank you and we praise you as we lift you and bless your name right now as we look back over our shoulder and think about how far you brought us and what you brought us through. Uh, our hearts and souls just cry out and say, yes, Father, to your will and your way. And we just thank you and we praise you for bringing us to this point that we have a yes in our soul, Father. Uh, and so we, I know that's the beginning of good things. And so we just bless your name right now for, for that in itself. And then, Father, we remember the, uh, those that have not yet made it in. And we pray, Father God, that you would direct them through the traffic and, and through all the media uh, that might be out uh, in, in their way, Father God. Bring them in. Allow us to, uh, to partake in your word, Father God. Thank you. Uh, uh, bring them in, Father, because you've dropped things in them that we need here. So Father, we thank you for this space and this time that you've given us, Father God, to, to come and share your word and those things that you drop in our soul. Now we pray, Father God, that you would, again, just pray a blessing over every a participant, every member, every viewer, anybody that might see it or hear it. We just, we just pray uh, the anointing over their life to hear it and receive it in Jesus' name. Yes, I'm pray, Father God, that you would guide us and direct us today that things that we say would be in line with your word and your will and your way. Line us up with truth right now, Father God. That's our desires to share your truth with one another. And Father, as you do it, we'll grow. We'll be better. We'll serve you better, Father. We thank you for it right now, this opportunity. We give you honor. We give you glory. and We give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Woo! What a day. So we're here and we're trusting God to lead us in this Bible study. I told you, guys, I'm excited. I can't wait to see what you're going to bring to the table. I'm just going to come and support whatever it is that you bring to the table. So, uh, Reverend Raynard, would you please orientate us into this Bible study? Okay. Well, well you know, we, we this is this blessed book of Acts that we have opportunity to partake in. You know, one of the things I recognize is that for so long, it was just making my confession and knowing that I was in the, in the, in the family and, and, and I, would, I, would, I was good. But I began to find out that there was more and more to this, that it's not over till it's over. <laughs> to, till he cracks the sky, we're working on this thing. So we, I thank him for this book of Acts, which brings another piece in. Aside from making our confession and believing, we need to receive the precious, blessed Holy Spirit that mm -hmm. he might be able to, 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 to add those things to us that would, would take us over the finish line. <laughs> You know, when you're running a race and you get by halfway and you get tired and, and, and you know, they say, whew, I don't think I'm going to make it. And then what you find out is you find all of a sudden what happens is uh, they say you get your, your second wind kicks yes. in. <laughs> the Holy Spirit, he's a he's a wind. And my, yes, my yes, second yes. wind kicks in every now and then, somebody. <laughs> I'm troubled when my second wind kicks He's in. He's to make me shout over here, Reverend. <laughs> Hallelujah. My second yeah. wind. I've been watching these Olympics. My goodness. Go ahead, bro. Work it. Work it. <laughs> but but uh, so we know that this book of Acts, and we, with chapter two, we can't stop echoing it and, and how the, the spirit of God came upon us. Mm. It came upon us. And, 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 at that, and at that particular point, it changed the thing. So we were looking, and in chap chapter two, the spirit failed. And, and, and we read a little farther, and uh, when the, the spirit failed, and they didn't know what was going on. What's going on? This is something different. We ain't seen this before. And that was a cue for Peter to step up and preach. Peter preached. Yeah. You know, Jesus had left. Jesus was gone. We need a preacher. And Peter, Peter, Peter jumped out. 
and he begins to he begins to share that gospel uh, uh, with them. And 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 it's some about it's some about when you have the Holy Spirit, and then they 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 add a little word to it. I I, I don't know. It's just some about that combination when the word hits the spirit in me. It's so like some electricity is produced. I, I, yeah. I maybe I might be talking to myself. I don't know, but I know somebody out done felt that spark when the when the when a word comes and it hits that Holy Spirit in you and and you say yeah, a, a light bulb go on and yeah, you get really and get nice. energized and so second chapter uh, they receive the Holy Spirit and immediately we see at the end of chapter two the 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 working of the holy spirit in them and and that working was that the the believers were in fellowship they were in yes. good standing with each other yes. they begin to start liking each other and take care of each other and I, I, I as, as pastor omar you always say i love that church i'm looking for that place yes. <laughs> uh, don't get me wrong i'm, I'm doing good I'm, I'm being loved where i'm at i'm being loved where i'm at but I, but I like the I like this picture they painted in this book here, you know. So yes, so so, so uh, the spirit comes and he changed them. See, one of the things the Holy Spirit does is he gets he does something with our character. Yeah, I, I really think that 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 issue of the fruits of the spirit, the character of God, uh, that's what the Holy Spirit really came to really emphasize. Now that he said, now that you saved, we gonna get you changed. <laughs> and then yeah. Holy Spirit comes in and he begins to do stuff. He's remember back when when Peter and John, Peter and John, re remember that 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 they were changed to the degree that they were at the gate of beautiful. And something happened and uh, so there was kindness and there was love that rolled yes. up, raised up. And, and they saw that crippled beggar. And, and they had to go and help him. And they say, look, we uh, silver and gold, we ain't got nothing, but we we got to give you what we got. We we go, what we we want to give you some of this. And so so it it, it was it's, it's just how the Holy Spirit is dealing with people's character on the inside. I think yes. I think I think if, if that was something that would happen in this world today, <laughs> I, I mean, characters need to change. Uh, and, and so and so the. Uh, we see that we see the Holy Spirit working first in the church mm. with, the, with the believers. He worked with them and he brought them together. They were on one page looking out for each other. Immediately what happens in chapter three is that's when we see the situation with the, they were no longer in the church. The church was fixed. So now the church, the fixed church needs to go out into the world and change this world. And so here they are here. They find themselves and there's a crippled beggar. They address that. And one of the things that we found was every time we see miracle signs, wonders, and miracles happening, we, we also know that there's haters coming to challenge it. Haters yes. are always looking, waiting, post, following us all around. They just waiting so they can hate on something. And, yes, uh, yes, yes. So, so, so this happens, we see this pattern of God doing things and spirit moving and signs and wonders and then haters coming. But that word, that word, preached word is always behind it. Mm. And, and in the midst of the haters, there's always a return. It says like wow. 2,000, 4,000, thousands yes. of yes. people coming. Can you yes. imagine that? I'm like, it's one thing if we're in a huge stadium where a thousand people are packed in, but we're talking in biblical times and they're saying thousands of people just pop up to hear Jesus. I'm like, wow, that's, 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 that's awesome right there. Uh, and so uh, we got the uh, chapter four, uh, well, Peter and John, they were challenged. Remember they were challenged, the, the leadership, the leadership was challenging all of these miracles and signs and wonders that were going on. Uh, uh, we see they had a problem with these things. Uh, and so uh, Peter and John uh, had to, the Sanhedrin, they dealt with, they, they, they were dealing with that. And, and I think this is where, uh, look what they were telling them, uh, that uh, uh, immediately following that, it says that- Silver and gold have I not, but such as I have, I give unto you. Rise yeah. up and walk. <clears throat> so the man gets up and walks, and that's blowing the people's mind. They're like, what, what, what's going on? 
Because mm -hmm. the word went forth, and then mm -hmm. signs came following. Signs. With that, that chapter three, powerful, powerful piece. Yes. Yeah, so in chapter four, here we see, again, being challenged. Being challenged. Uh, and uh, is this where they were saying, don't preach that, judge yourself? Yeah. Yeah, for they called it again and, and teach at all. Hey, it, it was uh, verse uh, 15 in chapter four. Mm -hmm. And so they tell them, they tell them, look, they, they had arrested them. They tell them, don't be preaching that name, Jesus. We're not having that. And, you know, they, they, they didn't back down. They, they simply said, you know, are we going to follow what man is saying or are we going to yeah. do what God is talking about? I, I love them. I love them how they stand up. They stand up guys, you know. It, it, it's more, you, I love those kind of people who, 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 who say what they mean and mean what they say, you know. A lot of people say we with you, but when they, it, it, it hits the fan, they ain't quite with you, but but this they're hanging in here. Well, watch, watch them. And so they're saying, don't preach that, preach that, don't use that word, don't use that name, we're not that name, we're not having it. And and right. and so so they they the spirit of God gets them released from prison. That's that that's what I noted there, you know. If when we're we're called to go into hard situations, challenging situations, Ooh. and and speak truth to power. We're called for that. Uh, and But when we do it and we withstand the challenge, that's when we know that God is getting ready to do something because always following their taking a stand, mm -hmm. standing, holding their ground, God never lets them down, but he comes with an answer to the situation. So the answer here was they were released from prison. They were released from prison. They go... They go home, and the first thing they do when they get home, y'all wouldn't believe what happened. They said this, and don't preach Jesus. And you know what the the, the, the church said? Let's pray. Yes. I'm like, that's my kind of people. Yes. Let's pray. They said, let's pray, let's pray, let's pray. And they and and and, and exactly that they did. Um. So. Uh, at the end of this chapter four, we see the believers share their possessions. We see that whole thing about the love of the, of the believers one for another, how they were looking out and taking care of each other. That That's brought up again. Remember, that's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's yeah. the work of the Holy Spirit. But then what the kicker was, was after the church had stood firm and made some ground, in chapter five, we see Ananias and Sapphira. Now the church had stood their ground. They had come together. They were moving and operating in love. And it said Barnabas said he they said he sold all of every his possessions and let everybody whatever they needed. And we, I'm like, wow, Barnabas and you guys, y'all doing it, y'all, y'all straight. But it's always something in the crowd. Chapter five, Ananias and Sapphira tried to run game on the Holy Spirit. That's 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 what it said. Somewhere at it. Then Peter said, "This is verse five, uh, chapter five, verse three. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has filled your heart that you, that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money you received for the land?" Peter said it in clear language. You have you you you're messing with the Holy Spirit, and and one of the things that we had out of our recent classes is that the Holy Spirit ain't nobody to play with. I'm gonna say it again: the Holy Spirit ain't nobody to play with. So we know the story. We the story is uh, that was enough to get them killed, and they died. Mm -hmm. Ananias and his wife. Oh. So, so here we 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 went into a, another part of uh, uh, the next pericope in in chapter five is. Uh, you know, let me let me clarify. I heard, I saw a note in the um, I saw a note in the as you're going to chapter five. There was a note in there where you said they were running game. <laughs> that, that's the that idea is that they gaming, they tricksters. You, I don't know if you ever had that happen to you. I, 
But working downtown, I, I always see people on a mission. They run a game. They try to trick me in the name of God, trying to let, oh, God bless you. Could you give me $5? You know, I, I, I'd be like, woo, Father. So you have to move with the spirit. But that's what he was referring to, that they thought that they can get all the honor and prestige like Barnabas got for selling his house and giving all of it. They wanted that for themselves, but they lacked integrity, mm -hmm. right? Because they lacked integrity, because they lied to the Holy Spirit, they didn't see the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was among the people. Mm -hmm. Peter was right there being a representative of most people of the Holy Spirit. And when they lied to him, saying that we sold it all, mm -hmm. that was proof that they were on the wrong mission. They were trying to run game and God caught them in there. So that's why I put out a, I put out a video, y'all. I don't know. Do you know you can die? Lying to the Holy Spirit, I don't know that, but that's what he's trying to say. And and then we connected that Reverend Raynor with the whole idea of taking communion, right? Because mm -hmm. when you take communion, it said some of you are sick and weak among you because you're not doing it, discerning, yeah, mm -hmm. the Holy Spirit, the yeah. mind of God in in the midst. So so yeah, that that chapter was that 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 part right there was something else. I see that hand, um, Judith. Come on. Just a really quick note, and what also helps me with uh, understanding the Holy Spirit is he's a real person. So it's like Ananias and Sapphira, the Holy Spirit was standing right next to them and yes. just motioning to Peter, mm -hmm. Peter, they're lying, you know, but he's, that helps me a lot to know the Holy Spirit is a real person. Mm. It's a, he's a yes, person. Yes. So, yes, yes. So, so, so yes, let's just build on that. The Holy Spirit is definitely i'm gonna say can i say personality and mm -hmm. i and i work with that but the holy spirit is a person in that it has feelings you can grieve the holy spirit you can make the holy spirit have joy you can be the holy spirit is in us and, and, and there are many things the holy spirit one thing it teaches one thing it illuminates you know it's so many it brings so many things <clears throat> are included in the holy spirit now mm -hmm. Um, those believers, they were exposed to the Holy Spirit, Ananias and Sapphira, but they had chicanery, they had trickery, they had they had uh, in lack of integrity, bothering them, what running after them, and that was and 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 that's the early church. So so it seems like to me that God was like, I'm going to have to shut this down now, mm. and so the shutdown was y'all acted up, you don't lose your life over it. And then from then on, it said the people didn't were scared to come among them. They didn't want to, they didn't want to be fooling with it. What, what, what? <laughs> they, they got a they got an invisible person <clears throat> amongst them, uh actually carrying out the will of God, listening to the words, I mean, empowering them, uh giving them gifts. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So yeah, the Holy Spirit yeah. is a person, personality, and so much more. In fact, it is in this passage that um According to the text, it connects the Holy Spirit with God. How do you lie to God and lie to the Holy Spirit? This is the one place I know for a fact in the text, it, it puts that together. I always know that the Holy Spirit is God, but some people may not be aware of that. So so there's God among us. Good. But yeah. Ray, Ray, let's set up, set up this other part. Because you said something in our study today. I want to get, make sure you get that. PP. Yeah. Remember PP? Amen. Amen. Now, so we see that Ananias and Sapphira brought another view. The same Holy Spirit that can bless us and, and, and lift us and change us can also turn around and be the one that becomes our un undoing. <clears throat> so he's no one to play with. But that song that we had today, I, 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 my soul says yes. That is the Holy Spirit. He works my spirit so that I can say yes and not have an Ananias and Sapphira type situation. Uh, and so at the end of, uh, well, this story, Ananias and Sapphira, chapter five, it was verse 11. It says, great fear seized the whole church and all who heard about these events. Yeah, the, the, the Holy Spirit, he was doing more than Ananias and Sapphira then. 
He's yeah. saying, this is for Ananias and Sapphira, but this is for all of you who might have the, the idea that you're going to play me. <laughs> the yes. Holy Spirit made an example. And so thank God for, for that. And the, and the people uh, were in great fear. But verse 12 said, and the apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders among the people. So it didn't stop the Holy Spirit from moving and working and things it didn't stop the, 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 the program from going on, but they just had to stop and do a little elimination. Uh, and, 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 I, and I'm saying that to myself, I'm saying, Ray, watch your walk, watch yourself, uh, uh, because you don't want to be the, you don't want to be the reason for your own demise, you know? Mm -hmm. And so it's staying in line. See, now that you got the Holy Spirit, obey him. Allow him to change you, work you. Uh, uh, and so, so we see that uh, it goes on here that they begin, they would continue to do all the, 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 the apostles continue to do the mir miraculous signs and wonders. We talked about apostles. We had yeah. a discussion one session about the apostle, exactly what they were and so on and so forth. I won't go there now. Maybe you can if you want to, Pastor Omar. Omar. But what I saw here was that there was a healing thing that went on all of a sudden. They were actually bringing the sick out into the street and watch this. We never talked about it, but this was awesome. He said they bring them out in the street in hopes that at least, if nothing more, uh, that Peter's shadow could fall on somebody that was out there laying down. Now, I've been to a lot of places where people say, well, yeah, you got to hear this person preach. They, 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 it's life changing, you know, or you need to read this. It's life changing. But I never heard anybody say, but if you let Ray, Ray's shadow fall on you, it can be life changing. Mm. And I, I just thought that was interesting. We didn't talk about it, but it would be good food for thought. I mean, how, what, what's going on? The shadow of Peter was healing some people. Or, or, and uh, it says, so it went on and said, the crowds gathered uh, from uh, towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those tormented by evil spirits and all of them were healed. Healing, yeah. healing, healing is, is something. I'll tell you that we need healing today. That's, that's, a, that's a big order for healing, healing. We just came out of, we just had the COVID just going on along a little while ago. Healing, healing is always. Uh, so at this particular point, there the Holy Spirit is still operating. He's still moving. We still went through a couple of little changes. We had our Ananias and Sapphira situation. We've dealt with the authorities. We've been in jail, but the Holy Spirit has brought us through each one, and we don't even have a blemish. <laughs> I didn't. I ain't heard about nobody getting beat down or uh, abused physically yet. <laughs> That's what happens when I can hold my space in Christ, even when it's getting hard. And so this this is where we we pick up now. And, and, and it just was a, a little statement I wanted to say as we go through and begin to study this portion, starting at uh, verse 17 in chapter 5. And, and, and it, it, to me, what it, what it amounted to was it was focused on how these people were, their perseverance, their stick to their going through, dealing with whatever came, holding their place down, the perseverance in the midst of their persecution. Ooh. I want us to think about that as we're studying this today. Perse perseverance, to persevere in a situation of, of persecution. Amen. Amen. So I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stop and park right there because that's where we are. I, I, I believe we left off at uh, verse 17 in chapter 5. Yeah, it's very, very nice. Thank you. That was an excellent um, review. Um, we did. The, if you wanted to find out the work about the apostles, that's going to be on YouTube, Omar A. Muhammad, Muhammad THM on YouTube. You can find it under the, the um, list called uh, Acts of the Apostles. That's there for your own, for your own uh, thing. So now, 
Uh, does anyone have after you've heard Reverend Raynard's discussion? I was like, man, he he took that took that on. Uh, was there any art parts that really stuck out to you that you want to do before we in chapter five before we press on to this next section? Because he he done taught us that um, perseverance in the in the face of persecution. That's huge. Anyone else had any thoughts on those past? I'm, I'm primarily talking about those verses between 12 and uh, that's 12 and 16. Uh, yes, actually, I didn't get to 17. I was, I was actually finishing up on 15 and 16, but I'm ready for 17. Okay. But um, in, in my study, I looked at the type of people or what was being healed after Peter's shadow, those that wanted to, get, I also studied that uh, uh, verse 15 in that they brought people on beds and couches, beds and couches sort of um, indicated that uh, <laughs> there were all kinds of people, people that were poor, as well as people that were a little bit more well-to-do. Mm. Uh, it was the bed and couches. Uh, I don't really want to dig down into that, but it just indicates that both poor people as well as well-to-do people came and to get under the shadow of Peter passing by might overshadow them. And I, I took a look at overshadow uh, and it means what it implies, what we know in the English overshadow means, but, uh, and that they came from all around in verse 16, uh, all around Jerusalem, bringing sick people or sick folks, uh, which is what we understand in the English to be people that are weak physically or morally infirmed and sick. And I'm getting that from Strong's Concordance. And I also looked at the word vexed. Let me get that one. Um, and I also looked at unclean spirits. Where did I put yeah. vexed? Unclean so, spirits. Hold on a second. That, hold on a second. I just, I don't know if it's me, but if you would get a little closer to your mic, I would hear it a little okay. bit better. Or maybe that's aging. I'm just aging a little bit. But I, I wanted to make sure I'm clear what you said. You talked about a couple of things that you looked at. You you did a word study on what word was that? A word study on beds and couches, which indicated both poor and, and well, more well-to-do people, not necessarily rich, but more well-to-do people uh -huh. uh, came. Yes. I also checked out uh, overshadow, Peter's shadow, overshadow, overshadowing people, which is basically what we understand that to be in the English, in that mm -hmm. shadow and oversh overshadow. And also uh, who came, and that was uh, people that were bringing sick folks, people that were vexed with unclean spirits. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to understand, well, are we talking physical? Yes. Are we also talking spiritual? Mm -hmm. And are we also talking just sick? And, and the answer is yeah. yes. Yes, yes, uh, yes. Un yes, yes, yes. And yes. I just got a little bit deeper into things like people with unpure thoughts. People mm. with impure, let's see, uh, unclean means because tainted by, adulterated with a wrong mix, and hence unclean because tainted by sin. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about things that are not pure. Uh, we're talking about things that are, let's see, that's unclean. Vexed would be, I can't find my study on vexed. Uh, gosh, uh, let's see. I, well, I did a study on vexed. Mm -hmm. and Wait, say that I word again. Because I... Ve vexed, B E X E D. Now, I'm this is vexed, from uh, oh, you, you use the King James version, uh, yes, I'm getting yes, okay, good, good. Yeah, okay, that's, I remember I that word, the vexed. King James, yeah, I, I looked okay. at that word too. What did so, you come so up that's, with? Um, I can't find it, past Omar. Uh, I, I don't but have my vexed hand was on it. Angry, no. I'm talking about violently okay. angry. I'm talking about okay. I want to hurt somebody real bad, angry, and they did it in what they call righteous indignation. They were they were like trying to stand up for God, and they're going to do this kind of crazy stuff going on to act a fool because that that vexing that's what it was. That's what I I okay. remember looking that one up. Now the shadow okay. is amazing. I'm I'm glad Reverend Raynard put that down. Now the shadow you talking about. I'm thinking that, you know, the modern people talking about you have an aura around you, you know, there's an aura, you know, so 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 there's actually energy. I'm 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 maintaining that the energy of the Holy Spirit was so on this man that even his shadow blessed. Now, when I, I I've seen people, I used to think they were fakers, I don't know what, 
get, take a handkerchief blessing and go give me this handkerchief, do that. But 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 here in scripture, it wasn't that. It was just a shadow. So I can see people mm -hmm. driving in. One of the main things I think is important is that Jesus heals. Let me just stop for a second. The spirit of the living God in Christ Jesus heals. And not only the spirit of the living God in Christ Jesus, but when Christ is in us, which is the hope of glory, we can see healing flow through us if we only believe. I know it took me to go thousands of miles to the to the country of Kenya in the, on the continent of Africa, not still not believing what this was all about. I was just, I'm going, I'm a, I was, live with a pastor program. And they called Pastor Omar because this sick, this lady is sick on her sick bed. She just, she just sick. Went to all the doctors, couldn't get her, couldn't help her. This lady's sick, right? So um, Pastor say, you know, we go around and we, we pray for all the people. Pastor say, pray for her. I was like, you should be praying for her. <clears throat> I don't know if I can pray for her, but I'm going to tell you what happened. I closed my eyes and immediately I was transported to the woman with the issue of blood. And when I touched her, I said, if I could but touch the hem of his garment, we will, I will be healed. And I prayed that prayer, biblical prayer, for to be healed in the name of Jesus. And that was it. I walked away. And I was just like, oh, Lord, please help me get away today. I, I need to go far with it. If this don't happen, I don't know what's going to happen. <laughs> the next day, a villager came and said, hey, 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 that lady, that lady, she's healed. She, I was like, I was, <laughs> I was like, okay, Lord, you do that? Okay, and now I know you do that. And just right. to make sure it was true, he had a little boy who was sick too, similar to what the lady was. And I did the same prayer for the little boy, pressing into the scripture. I was right there. I felt like I was right there with, grabbing on. I couldn't see what Jesus looked like. All I could see is the him. And I'm grabbing on to him with all my might on the behalf of this boy. And get, that boy gets healed. A couple of days later, Amen. we see a little boy running around. So I'm like, saints, I do not know. But I do know this. The scriptures say his shadow <laughs> fell on folks. Mm -hmm. and, and notice that mm -hmm. they were bringing mm -hmm. people who were physically sick, and he was in it because it said, I think it said, did, I think somebody put it in that. Did it say he healed all the people? Oh, wait, 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 wait. And it said, it said, I'm looking at 16. The crowd mm -hmm. gathered also from towns around Jerusalem, bringing their sick and those who those tormented by impure spirit. First, bringing the sick, those people have a malady. They have maybe a dis-ease in their body. So they're sick, right? Then you have those tormented by impure spirit. I don't know. I call that demon possession. Mm -hmm. I don't know mm -hmm. what you call it. Mm -hmm. Then it said I... they were tormented by impure spirits and all of them were healed. So I see psychological healing. I see emotional healing. I see physical healing. I see, and, and I'm as a pastor, I'm gonna tell you, Reverend Reynard knows this. When we are in our we when we, we had well we, while we were doing the church, we would collect all the prayer cards and then we designated a prayer a time to pray for the card. The the healing power was the highest power. People want to be healed. Mm -hmm. And if we can align ourselves, I just believe it, I know it happened, I had to go far away to do it. Now, the thing is, I don't know if there's that much faith in America. I, you know, Jesus will put people out of the room. I don't know if America is so, got so much of a um, static in, in our country that we can't really do miracles like they were before. Ah, yes, I like that. Judah said, killed from addictions. Absolutely. That's, isn't that a malady? Isn't that a sickness? Yes. That, oh, my God. And I got to tell you, I've been healed from some sicknesses like that. And I give praise to God that I ain't like that no more. Mm -hmm. Power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have a quick testimony that you know that God healed? I'm talking about the modern day time. Good to see you, Vivian. Do you have a testimony? Clean and purge, yes. That also do, who, uh, Judas, you're talking about clean and purge. That also has to do with 
moral sins, th sins that, that are not that, you know, oh man, one time in the scripture it said, you talking about the church, you you doing stuff, not even the, the, the nations do, you sleeping with your, I think your father's mother, some weird stuff, some kind of abnormal um, behavior uh, that's not good for society, yes. So yes, that kind of cleansing is going on. And I, that's why I'm taking just a moment. Is there anybody here, give me a brief one, not the super long one, but get oh, who can testify that they've been healed? Hmm. I see your hand, Reverend Raynard. Is that you you want to testify? Uh, uh, I, no, I was I was uh, back on what, something else you were talking about uh, when you were when you were talking uh, and you were talking about you were there and they were saying pray for him. Yes, and, exactly. and you kind of not underestimated yourself or said, oh, "Okay, I'll pray for him," and you didn't really. But you prayed and then you heard, you say, you know what? That worked. That worked. Why? Because it was not Pastor Omar. It was God. The Holy Spirit had uh, positioned you to pray the prayer that was going to be the breakthrough for. I'm, I'm, I'm just going to take us back because we've been here before. And, and, and after, uh, in, in uh, the chapter four, and um, no, it was in chapter three. Um, and this was when Peter healed the cripple, uh, the cripple beggar. Yes. And, and then the people saw, in, in verse 11, it says, while the beggar held on to Peter and John, all the people were astonished and came running to them uh, in the place called Solomon's Colonnade. So they, the, and Peter and John saw him running. They saw him coming. They knew what they were coming to do. They were coming to give them the glory. And they mm -hmm. stopped them. They said, and when Peter, verse 12, when Peter saw this, he said to them, men of Israel, why does this surprise you? Why do you stare at us as if by our own power or godliness, we had made this man walk? And, right. and, and that's very important that we have to understand that nothing that happens happens because of us. It yeah. happens because the spirit is in us working with us uh, to bring us into a place where we. And so and so we, when we talk about the, the Peter walking by and the shadow, uh, there's nothing too hard for God. There, it's all too hard for me. <laughs> but God uses me. I'm like a glove here in the earth realm. Mm. This is a glove. You have a glove, you sit it on the table, it does nothing. But when someone <laughs> comes up and slips their hand in it, it can do all kinds of things. And that's how I am. I'm like a glove laying on the table. But when the Holy Spirit came in me and slipped in, I ain't nothing much I can do now uh, by God, through God. So I just wanted to share that, but... <laughs> well. Well, Reverend Raynor, I want to respond to that and say thank you. I was a young man. I might have been like 20, 21, something like that, when that happened. Mm -hmm. And you you just because I knew it wasn't me. How I knew it wasn't me, because I had, <laughs> I was, I was like, I don't even but I, I honestly I'll tell you too, I said, I don't believe in that. I don't know mm -hmm. if y'all earnest mm -hmm. things, mm -hmm. things be healed in Jesus' name. That's how I used to talk. <laughs> <laughs> but I used to be mocking them and doing all that kind of stuff. But when that Holy Spirit came and did that for that for that child and that, that mother, I was like, oh my God, this is a, this is a real stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it scared me into <laughs> not doing it anymore. Because I haven't, I, no, I'll be honest with you. Uh, since I was working downtown, I, miracles started happening more and more. And I, and I want to say that that is not, that is not me. I'm like a glove, someone said. And the Holy Spirit just slip in that glove and be moving and move. And then that, ooh, goodness gracious. <clears throat> so we want to, we want to be like a a, 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 a sail ship. If you put them sails up and let the spirit carry us and take us to the mm. just to, Judith, you had your hand up. Yeah. And the other half of the equation is, and we're talking about people who really wanted to be healed and they yeah. had faith. 
So there's two mm -hmm. sides of healing. It's mm -hmm. it's those that are the are are the gloves, <laughs> and the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit and the gloves working mm -hmm. as one. But there's mm -hmm. also people who want to be healed and who believe yeah. because, uh, you know, um, we get requests to pray for people to be healed all the time, you know, yeah. and this is teaching me how to pray and, and to know that God heals using pastor Omar's uh example I'm I'm going to I'm going to think about that the next time somebody asks me to pray for healing uh, yeah. I'm going to think about that and think about this passage here mm -hmm. but I also know that uh I don't want to be bogged down in and it's not my responsibility and that's going to be the hard part I think to know if I'm dealing with somebody who really wants to be healed and who believes that God can heal you, you know what I mean so, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to, this, I'll, I'll be using this as a, um, an example to, to follow, to go by. Yes. And so I want to thank you for bringing that point up because that is an essential part of it. You know, I add my faith to your faith. You add your faith to my faith to touching and agreeing about a thing. It will come to pass. That's what the scriptures say. If you believe in that. So mm -hmm. I think we need to do a little bit more. Um, I think touching and agreeing, somebody has to do a study on what it means to touch and agree in scripture. Because mm -hmm. some people say that it's to, to touch, not necessarily touch physical touch, but to touch in spirit and agree that this thing that we're asking for will be done. Believe me, because you write about that equation. That lady believed. The boy believed. And they was they were hooking up with the God in me. And and the, the, the and I was I was I was really out of, I got moved out of the picture so to speak. Only thing on my hand was there <laughs> but I, but I, you know, really, I went back to my, my, um, uh, the village, like, oh my God, Lord. You did your part. Honor your word. So yeah, that's all that part. So that's, that's really, really good. Anyone else? I want to get, uh, I, I shared one of my testimony. Anybody got a testimony, uh, of, of the Lord actually coming and you took a problem to the Lord. You took a, you took a, a situation and you took it and God healed you. Hmm. Going one. Yes. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll give you one that I'll share, and that's smoking. Uh, I smoked cigarettes mm. uh, for 24 years, mm -hmm. and I learned something about the Holy Spirit mm. inside of when the Holy Spirit came came to live inside of us. And I use this, you know, I'm able to use this for a lot of stuff. I should anyway. That meant that I had power, mm. and that's in Romans. Romans teaches us about. Romans 12, thank God for the Holy Spirit, you know, for coming inside of the power. Yes. We didn't have it at first. We didn't have it prior to receiving Jesus. Yes. And as a result of that, we couldn't, we couldn't stop sinning. But now mm. we have the power of the Holy mm. Spirit. And so I just, I, I latched onto that and I need to latch onto that for, for a lot of other stuff that I need to pray, you know, that I be delivered from, let's put it that way. So, but smoking cigarettes was one of them. I just believe, I said, I've got the power to stop. I believe mm -hmm. I've got the power to stop smoking. Mm -hmm. And that's what helped me to smoke. And I'm using that for other, like I said, other stuff that I need to stop, you know? So, yeah. That's... Thank you. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. You, you get a whole lot of fire. <laughs> you brought to us today thank you how about you um um uh reverend hunter you got anything i'm walking you in i want to hear your voice what, what you're hearing the lord say in this time period coming for you next um vivian <laughs> amen i like what sister judith just said about the holy spirit being able to deliver and heal us of anything. And I think that's powerful in that we're really not kind of taught that for the most part. You know, the Holy Spirit's just here to make us feel good or, mm. you know, give us a quickening. Mm. But he's here to enforce the covenant or the promise of God in our lives. And if we don't get 
everything that God has for us, it's not God's fault. Mm. It's not Jesus' fault. Mm. It's not the Holy Spirit's fault. Mm. It's it's on us. Mm -hmm. So I mean, are there some things in my life that that I need the Holy Spirit to minister and heal me of and deliver mm. me of? Absolutely. Mm. But I have to begin to realize that he can do it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What's that? What, what was that? The man that that was that was sick. And and he asked Jesus to heal him, and and the man was like, "Yeah, I, I believe, mm -hmm. but help my unbelief." Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's powerful because I'm still trying to figure out what that guy meant. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. And, and I just. I really appreciate what Sister Judith shared. I want to get everything that God has for me. Yes. Not just material stuff. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I want to be healed. I want to be delivered. I want to be mm -hmm. whole. Yes. You know, I don't want to go through life handicapped by my past and all that kind mm -hmm. of stuff. Mm -hmm. Go on and on. But yeah, I, I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Amen. 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 Uh, Vivian, get prepared. I want you to open your mouth. Um, Reverend, I heard while you were speaking, um, invite me in. Invite me in. And, I, and the scripture that's coming to me, acknowledge the Lord in all your ways, and he will direct your path. Amen. Amen. Uh, Amen. I saw Judith inviting the Lord to come and take care of that part of the situation. Help. <laughs> Lord, I'm inviting you to, yeah. and then so you're inviting him, and, you, and so he, and I'm, uh, the scripture said, acknowledge him in all your ways. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's, you know, you're trying to build a house, you're trying to make your life plan, you're trying to do, you're trying to find a wife, you're trying to find what, what all, invite him, in, invite God in. And I'm loving this, that belief that he wants to. The scripture is, is very, very, very evident that he wants to heal. <laughs> Mm -hmm. to heal more than we want to be healed. Mm -hmm. uh, Sister Vivian, you ready? What you hear in the say, talking to you as you hear. Yeah, I don't know this. Some of you may not, but Vivian Seals is our oversight in the ministry. She is the director of Seniors on the Move. She got one of the most vibrant and lively ministries at Faithful Central Bible Church. They go to the move. They learn how to write a will. They, they do all kinds of things. That that on per on, they play games. <laughs> this this is an on purpose group, and we thank God and they support Bible studies like this. Thank you very much. What you got to say, Sister Vivian? Unmute your mic. Unmute your mic. We cannot hear you. Well, she's learning. Oh, there she is. She got it. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> Morning. Good morning. Yeah, thank you, Pastor Omar and Pastor Ray, for um, reading the Bible study. You um, just men of God. You have so much faith in everything that you do. I'm just very proud of you, and I'm thinking, and I thank the people that come to participate. We, I just enjoy it when I'm able to participate, but um, I'm trying to um, entice more people to come and join. Of the word that you've been delivered to us. I thank you for um, all that you do. I'm very proud of both of you. I'm very proud of everyone that come on to know about the word of God. Wow. Amen. Thank you for your support. Over Amen. Here. We've been here for about three years now. We thank you for all the support that you've given us, and we celebrate that. So um, sometimes you'll get announcements about what's next. I can't remember. You had something coming up next. I, I can't remember exactly what it is, but uh, you can check that out on Faithful Central Bible Church uh, calendar on the app. Now, how about uh, Sister Yvette? Are you available and able to speak, Sister Yvette? I'm coming to you, Sister Cryer, next. Yes, I am. Sorry about last week. I lost my phone and I was away out of town. Oh, wow. And I'm going to be gone for the next two weeks, starting um, Friday. But anyway, I'll try and check in. I'm going to Canada. But anyway, this is just so awesome. 
And what I took away from it and listening to everyone, um, you know, I have faith, but do how do I activate that faith? Because what I tend to do, I give it to God and then I go back and I take it back from him. <laughs> Because I think I need to hold on to it. I need to take care of it. So is that faith that I'm working on and truly hand it over when there's an issue, a problem, and let God work it out? Mm. So yeah. that's a work in progress for me. Mm. When it when it comes to faith, uh, I you know I pray and I, I understand God does many things, all things. But sometimes I struggle with, because you don't see, like, especially for healing, um, I don't see it. So when I don't see it or hear it, I'm thinking, is God doing this? And why mm -hmm. isn't it being done? Um, I have a friend that keeps telling me, you ask too many whys sometimes. But I, 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 I'm, I'm like that. And um, sometimes there's not an answer. And um, I just have to be silent, just have to be patient. And I'm sure I've done some of those things and wait for God to work it out. Yes. So um, this passage just remind me that he's always there. He's always working it out. And I truly need to give it to him wholeheartedly, 100%. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Can you hear me? No, can't hear you, something, Pastor. Something happened to my um, sound, but I'm, 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 I can hear you now. I changed it up. Got my headphones on. Let's see. All right. So I was hearing you talk about faith, Yvette, and yes. the faith that we need. Because uh, cause he said, when you pray, believe that you have what you're praying for. Mm -hmm. I think that's the part that we'd be missing. No, let me confess. That's the part that I miss. Me too. Sometimes I'm just praying, but I'm not necessarily believing. I'm leaving that to God. I believe God, but do you love me enough to heal me? Do you really want me to be healed? I'm, I'm, so, I'm just saying, I'm just, I'm just, you know. Or is this, is, is sickness a part of your will for my life at this particular time? Those, those questions come up. So, uh, we got to ask God. I see that hand right, right now. Come on, talk to me. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sitting here thinking, and as we're talking, and one of the things you were saying is that we saw the physical healing, the spiritual healing, we saw the mental healing. We saw that, that and, and that word all, you you made sure you you stressed that all. All the, the, the people were healed of all the issues and infirmities that they had. In other words, uh, it it's all doable, but now we're talking about what are the conditions and how the machine operates and, you know, and, and, and I believe that when we receive the Holy Spirit, he's our teacher, right? Mm -hmm. and, 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 and he, he comes in and begins to work from, see, the beauty of it is God was God above us. Then he was God next to us, yes. but now he's God in us. Yes. And, I'm, I'm more than physical healing, and I'm looking for these things up under the skin from the Holy Spirit. Yes. He changes my mind. He makes it so if I have some type of mental issue that I'm not, I'm doable, mm -hmm. that he can work it out. He can get, it's the beauty of getting up under the skin and dealing with me one-on-one -on -one personally. And then you know, I th the other thing that I've been really getting is that everything has to do with the perspective that I look at it from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> In other words, Ananias and Sapphira was looking at things from a certain perspective. Yes. Because something that caused them to think, oh, we can say this and do this. Whereas you have other people who wouldn't think of that because from the perspective that they're looking at, they say, no, nah, that's a no-go. So 
one of the things the Holy Spirit does is come up and he, in, in the inside and he fixes my perspective. Mm. He, he gives me a God perspective on stuff. That's why I might have been talking about, oh, my nose. I wish my nose was like so-and-so nose. And you know all those things we do. But the Holy Spirit comes in and he's the one that can convince me and say, boy, your, your nose is, 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 is on point. You know, that, that's the beauty. The Holy, I, he can change us. You, you know, it, it's the reason why I can get in and change my change me to the point where I can. I'm now capable of having a, a, a peace in unpeaceful situations. Wow. Why? Because I got a helper over here. Kind of, I'm saying, oh, I can't go no farther. He said, oh yes, you can. <laughs> he said, I'm saying, oh, that's too much for me. He said, no, it ain't. <laughs> that's my helper. He he wow. keeps me in the game. <laughs> And then he gives me that that little that little extra oomph, that extra foot, and that that's why you know now when I'm, I can go to the adversary and say you know back up off of that person, back up off of him or her, they're healed. Now how can I say that? Because <laughs> mm. I know I got to help her. I got to. Yeah. We, we use that in same analogy as reference to Jesus. We talk. About, yeah. I had a big brother when I was coming up, and. People used to try to jump on me, but when I brought my big brother, you know, yes. but big brother was next to you. But now Holy Spirit is in me. Mm. You can wake me up out of my sleep in the middle of the night. I got my help with me, somebody. <laughs> I'm ready to I'm ready to work with you, devil, wherever you come, because mm. I'm not gonna be caught without my help. My help, yeah. my help. Not my not just my help, because sometimes you got help that ain't capable. Mm -hmm. They want to help, but they can't do it. <laughs> but I got capable help. Yes. Come on. Come on. Yes. I, I, I'm waving my hand again. That, that's why. Uh, that's my help. You. Yeah. <laughs> that that <laughs> you're talking about is the privilege that we have of being believers. That, that comes along with our privilege. We, we, we got a whole mansion that we can move around. And we always trying to get to the mansion up in, in heaven. But we got a whole mansion in this realm. Mm -hmm. that we can work in a whole lot mm -hmm. of tools that we can take advantage of mm -hmm. but be, but we just still stuck in the foyer uh, y'all know anybody knows about a foyer we had a foyer in our house mm -hmm. and uh but, but that's the little room that where every mm -hmm. you know you come into it then you can go upstairs around that but you had that little room you can actually close that room off so some of us are stuck in the foyer of our spiritual growth and development mm -hmm. and god wants mm -hmm. to take us higher yeah 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 but mm -hmm. right, i felt something run through my spirit my spirit was encouraged Oh, that's the other thing is that you one of the things is you want to be around spirit filled people because you know there's a vibration going on there. There's an energy. Mm -hmm. That's probably why that touch and agreeing is going on. Yeah. Sister Saint Sear, what's up? Hello, people. I truly believe in the healing, and I truly believe the Holy Spirit gives you that power to heal. The thing is, as a human being. When I pray for healing for certain people, I don't want them to look at me as that healing power, me and my humanity. Look at the spirit in me that touching and agreeing that you will be healed in Jesus' name. Another part of healing for me is when I pray. My favorite part of the service at church is when people come to Christ, when the doors of the church is open and I can see, I say, oh, these people become, they're getting ready to get healed in their soul and their mind and their mm -hmm. spirit because they're coming to the Lord Jesus Christ, the ultimate healer. So healing is a wonderful thing in prayer and the Holy Spirit. We can't do nothing without it in mm -hmm. Jesus name. Amen. You better testify mm -hmm. because that's what you're doing. And when people hear us testifying, it works. I see Judas' hand. Oh, wait a minute. I got, I didn't see Lolo Lorraine. Are you able to say something, sister? Mm -hmm. I know you'd be working, but maybe you can. Hey, she did. Good afternoon to every soul that's on the line. <laughs> yeah. Pastor Omar, I need for you to please repeat the question because I'm not exactly sure. The question I... is, what is the spirit talking, saying to you as you listen or as you hear, as you're working? We want to hear about your dynamic relationship with the Holy Spirit in this case. We, we, we were talking about it as healing, but talk about it from your perspective. Okay. 
I'll be glad to. Uh, this is something that I talk about to Ray all the time about how I'm always amazed how the spirit works, you know, from my personal experience, how the Holy Spirit is is prompting me to say things and to do different things. And I never know it. I never know it until on the back end, usually, mm -hmm. when I see that something has turned out so right, so perfect, so wonderful, I can then look back and say, oh, that was the Holy Spirit telling me to open my mouth and say that that's the Holy Spirit, you know, directing me to do this or to go in this direction. I'm just always amazed how he's, he's a part of me and I don't consciously, I'm not feeling that it's the Holy Spirit moving me and guiding me and telling me that sometimes, sometimes I'm, I'm sort of clear but about it but normally i don't know sometimes i'm feeling a strong unction and you know to move or to say something and but i don't know that that's the holy spirit i just sort of wish that i always tell ray i i wish that i did know that it was the holy spirit prompting me to say something i think that i might be feeling more confident about saying something or doing something if i know it was the holy spirit that's actually pushing me or, or you know guiding me to say it but normally it's just, I, I feel the, uncle. I think it's just my thought. So I say something and do something. And then later I look back. It's only in hindsight that I know, oh, that was a spirit. Yes, beautiful. Well, you're not alone in what you're saying. Um, it's, a, it's a learning process of how to walk with the Holy Spirit. It's, mm -hmm. it's a process. And because the Holy Spirit is kind of, it's, it's a little bit more difficult because the Holy Spirit is not, is, I'm going to say it, it's a, it's a spirit. But the Holy Spirit is like gentle in the sense that he ain't going to run over your thoughts. He's not going to beat you. He's not going, he's not, he's not the, the um, you remember uh, Casper, the friendly ghost? He, he's not a ghost to try to, uh, a friendly ghost that try to scare you among other scary ghosts. No, it, this, the Holy Spirit is within us. That's what Reverend Raynard is saying. And he's moving us into different things. Anybody ever heard something told me? Have you ever heard told us <laughs> back and told a story? Something told me. Usually the something told you who is a believer is the Holy Spirit talking to you. Let's start. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I see that hand, Judith. Let's go. Oh, no, I just wanted to just uh, amen, uh, Miss Ellie and everybody. Yes. Uh, Pastor uh, Reverend Ray mentioned some things that really hit me. He said, people that have this perspective, that have this mind, you know, you, you gotta, you, you gotta, um, it's important. And I want to be around people with, that have the perspective, the mind to know, mm -hmm. uh, just like the sermon on Sunday, the renewing of your mind. I want the Lord to renew my mind where I have that perspective that, you know, I, I just, the I just have the perspective just to know to, of that belief. It's kind of hard for me to explain, but yeah. uh, <clears throat> people, it, you have to be in this group of people that have their perspective that God yeah. heals, yeah. that yeah. God heals all, all kinds of stuff. You got to have that mindset, you know, it's, it's a, uh, it, not attitude, but it's a, um, it's, it, it's a perspective. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not real. Uh, good so, with words. so let's, let's work with what you're saying because you're getting ready to go into what, what we, what we're doing, but I'm hearing the Lord said now, oh man, I can't even believe I'm saying this. Forsake not the assembling of yourself. Mm -hmm. Somebody find that scripture for me. Mm -hmm. And part of the reason why we don't want to forsake the assembly, uh, assembly, forsake not the, of ourselves, is because we got to get around people who have that like mind. Remember, a couple of things happened when they were all in the on one accord. Boom! The Holy Spirit fell on them like ooh, like like rain. So so it is important. And 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 if you remember last week, we studied what church was. If somebody put that up, go look at the video from last week. Uh, it's online. It's called. Let me see what's in here. It's called uh, the sent ones. But we talked about the church. And we understood that the church was an assembly. 
it wasn't even a religious word at, at one. Thank you, Hebrews uh, 20, 10, 25, thank you. So um, the, church, the church is an assembly and it, we, we learned that it was a common word in that day, the church. And if that's the case, uh, welcome to church. <laughs> if you're flowing with me. This is, a, this is definitely an aspect of church um, that we're dealing with. We, we, we right here and every time. And so, so, so you want to know, what, what, if you want to know one thing, I can tell you one thing the Holy Spirit does is one thing uh, the Holy Spirit does is the Holy Spirit moves on you to be here. Whether it's because you want to support, but I, I, knowing you, I realize that you the real deal. And I'm talking about right now to Sister Lorraine directly. And I'm saying that that's the Holy Spirit that puts it in your desire to be here. That's the Holy Spirit that unctions you to, to send a car and, and or a gift so unique to the person that it blows their mind. This is a, you you sent me my fire <laughs> in this Holy Spirit. So so it looks simple, but believe me, from the beginning of that thought to the very end of that thought, now you're seeing it in action. That is the Holy Spirit. Thank you. Somebody turn to uh, Hebrews 10 25 for me. Someone get Hebrews 10, 25. I'm trying to get it, but I, I'm a little slow. So that's going to bring us, this, this talk has been powerful, and it brings us right up into this situation where they have a teacher. Because one of the words I had to look up, um, Judas, is teach. That word just kept coming in my mind, teach, teach, teach. And because it said that they, they said that they didn't want them to teach anymore. In another place, mm. it says, that at the end of this past, something like, um, how does it say? Uh, yeah, yeah. They were teaching and spreading the good news. Mm -hmm. So whatever that is, it is a, um, whatever teaching and spreading the good news is, it is a opportunity for us to, um, to teach and to find out what teaching is. So I'm, I'm pulling up the scripture now for us. It should be up in just a moment. It's uh, Acts, uh, Acts, Acts 528 um, saying, Acts 528. did not we strongly us. command you that ye should not teach in this name and behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intent to bring this man's blood upon us. It, well, if well, we, yeah, uh, yeah. 528. So, and so whatever, too. whatever this is, it's something that's causing problems. So I, I looked at, let me see if I have a note on teach. I think I have a note up here on teach. Just so we can, that first one you saw teach was, uh, yeah. where did um, I see teach the first one? Oh yeah, they told him not to teach anymore, right? So that, that first one is going to be where? Yeah, told there was another place to. earlier, Pastor. There, there was a t place earlier, and, he, and I'm going to tell you where <laughs> it was. It had to do with they were when they were when they got arrested and when they were about to let them go, they told them 25. 25. Let's go to that one right there, because that's before you get there. But if someone came and reported uh reported to them, look, the men you are you put in prison are standing in the temple courts. Here it is, teaching the people. They probably was back over there at the colonnade. So so in this case, we want to be able to, <clears throat> to understand how to do that. So here's 25. Let me just see if I have a note on 25. I'm going to check on my notes. Click here. It's going slower because I'm, I'm online and all that. Okay, here it is. Here's my notes. So I want to look at the one on teaching. Why would you lie to the... Yeah, the first mention of the book to Acts. Yeah, we talked about that last week. The church, uh, fear that was that word you were talking about, vexing fear. We feel with soldiers. Sol oh, here, what does it mean to teach? To teach, Pastor. And I, yes, I just want to let me say this quite quick uh, that they had been uh, told prior not to be doing this, but they, uh, <sighs> Um, they were being persecuted. But what had happened earlier was they was put in jail, mm -hmm. but the Holy Spirit 
came and told them in verse 20, go stand in the temple courts and tell the people the full message of the new life. Yeah. And yeah. The Holy Spirit told them that when they were locked up. Right. <laughs> and then he released them. The Holy Spirit released them. And, and, and it's not down to 25 that they really recognized they was gone. Yeah. Out yeah, yeah. 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 Yes. Now, now, you know, that's a supernatural work you, you just put up because they because later on, they are going to get the, the Sanhedrin said, go, go get them. And they think they still in prison, but they gone because the Holy Spirit got just, just, just spirited them away. So we have to be open to different moods of the Holy Spirit. If we only think that we think the Holy Spirit only come to make you, you know, shout, then you limit in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit has way more that's going on. And yes, they went, to, they went over there to proclaim and to speak. Yeah, that was a great one. Uh, all the words of this life, mindset of this life. What does your version say? Anybody read, read your version, uh, Acts chapter 5, verse 20. If it's different, then go and stand in the temple courts and proclaim to the people all the words of this life. Mine says this new life. New life. Right. This new life, the one you got since the Holy Spirit has come, is what I'm Thank thinking. It thinks. Thank you. Thank you. And I do want to make sure we get that. And then here it is, they began teaching in 21. So I want to make sure that we get the fact that they are teaching this new life. And we know some elements of the new life. Because remember, Reverend Raynard, one day we asked ourselves, what is the gospel? <laughs> Yeah, yes. we, we gospel preachers and we asking ourselves, what is the gospel? Because we want to make sure we get it. One of the things is the gospel is that Jesus Christ was crucified, dead, buried, and rose from the grave. Mm -hmm. Now we're going to talk, we're going to see two people in this next passage that we're working on. We got 15 minutes to work on it, so we got to come back. So the Pharisees and the Sadducees. They were all a part of the, um, the religious order of that day. The Sadducees are the one that keep arresting. They arrested Jesus. They arrested, they arrested the apostles because they are not feeling him talking and changing things up. People are starting to believe in them. The numbers are growing all the time. What is, they want to shut it down. Mm -hmm. but, the, the, but, but here's another group, the Pharisees. Oh my goodness, I was thinking about this. The Pharisees are there, and one of the major Pharisees is this guy who we're going to meet. Where, hmm. where do we meet? Uh, we meet this brother. He, he, he's a word of wisdom to him. I think his name is Gamil. Gamelia. 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 However, you say it, Gamelia. This dude started talking. Why is he talking? Because they arrested the people again. Let's, let's do a little bit of reading. And so we can catch up to where we are. We already read 17. We already, oh, I'm sorry. I was giving you some notes on teaching so you can understand what this teaching is all about. Mm -hmm. To teach, <clears throat> to teach one used of Jesus and the apostles uttering in public what they wish their hearers to know and remember. So they're, they're, they're doing this teaching. They're teaching about Jesus, about what they wanted. And they're teaching from actually having contact with Jesus. We can look at the scriptures later. Uh, and it says, to act the part of a teacher among the Greeks, use of those who enjoin upon others to observe some ordinance, to embrace some opinion, to obey some precept, with especially reference to the addition which the teacher makes to the knowledge of the one he teaches, to impart instruction, instill doctrine into one. So all of this is what they're doing. They're trying to Rebuke, correct, teach, you know, because a lot of a lot of the stuff that the apostles had to do, they had to explain. They had to tear down uh, the old way of seeing God, and then rebuild a new way where they could say, "Abba, Father." That was all. About, that just one time, Jesus said said something about God was His Father, and they would try to kill Him at hmm. that moment. Right. We go around and say God is our Father all the time, but I don't know if we really if we, if we really taking off. Oh, Father. I don't know if we've really taken all that in. 
Because mm-hmm. sometimes the thought of taking it in, it, it it's overwhelming. One time I thought, I, I used to say, I'm going to let this go. But they talk about no man has seen God because they said, are there the, the thing that if you see God, you would just disintegrate. And uh, and probably, that's probably true. Because we see him as he is in his fullness. Uh, that's why uh, they had to put him in the cleft of the rock and they just saw God's backside. Yeah. But um, mm-hmm. But nevertheless, they're out there teaching. They're trying to correct. They're trying to get people to remember it. These elements, if you're a preacher out there, you need to put these elements in your uh, messages that you're trying. There's something you're trying to get. You want people to remember. You want people to know. You want people to observe ordinances. You want people to stop stop um, missing the mark of love, I, a.k.a. sinning, right? We want all that. That's what teaching is all about. So I want to set that backdrop. Now let's go and read a little bit now. Can I get a reader of the text? I think it's on the screen. Uh, you can see it. Is the text on the screen, guys? Hello? Reading from where? Starting from where? We're going to read from, we're going to read from, uh, it was 18, was it? 17. Mm-hmm. Now? Now the high I, priest rose up. Mm-hmm. Is that where you started? Yes, ma'am. Are we in 517? Yes, ma'am. Let's go. Okay. Now the high priest rose up and all those with him. That is the religious party of the Sadducees. And they were filled with jealousy. Mm -hmm. They laid hands on the apostles and put them in a public jail. But during the night, an angel of the Lord opened the doors of the prison, led them out and said, Go and stand in the temple courts and proclaim to the people all the words of this life. When they heard this, they entered the temple courts at daybreak and began teaching. Now, when the high priests and those who were with him arrived, they summoned the Sanhedrin, that is the whole high council of the Israelites yes, and sent to the jail to have the apostles brought before them. But the officers who came for them did not find them in the prison. So they returned and reported. We found the jail locked securely and the Mm -hmm. guards standing at the doors. Yes. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now, when the commander of the temple guard and the chief priest heard this report, they were greatly puzzled, concerning, wondering what this could be. But someone came and reported to them, look, the men you put in prison are standing in the temple courts and teaching the people. Then the commander of the temple guard went with the officers and brought the apostles without the use of force, for they were afraid of being stoned by the people. Mm -hmm. When they had brought them, they stood them before the council, and the high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in this name. Look, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you intend to to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles replied, we must obey God rather than people. Mm -hmm. The God of our forefathers raised up Jesus whom you seized and killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him to his right hand as a leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses of these events. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. Now, when they heard this, they became furious and wanted to execute them. But a Pharisee whose name was Gamaliel, a teacher of the law who was respected by all the people, stood up in the council and ordered the men to be put outside for a short time. 
Then he said to the council, men of Israel, pay close attention to what you are about to do to these men. For some time ago, Thudes rose up claiming to be somebody and about 400 men joined him. He was killed and all who followed him were dispersed and nothing came of it. After all, after him, Judas, the Galilean, arose in the days of the census and incited people to follow him in revolt. He too was killed mm. and all who followed him were scattered. So in this case, I say to you, stay away from these men and leave them alone. Because if this plan or this undertaking originates with people, it will come to nothing. But if it is from God, you will not be able to stop them. Mm -hmm. Or you may even be found fighting against God. He convinced them and they summoned the apostles and had them beaten. Then they ordered them not to speak in the name of Jesus and released them. So they left the council rejoicing because they had been considered worthy to suffer dis dishonor for the sake of the name. And every day, both in the temple courts and from house to house, they did not stop teaching and proclaiming the good news that Jesus was the Christ. Now, thank you. That was an excellent reading. I couldn't do that. It saved my life, but you, that's why God has us to have people. All right, you guys, what, what things struck out, struck, stood out to you in the, in the uh, six minutes that we have left? I saw something right, right up at the very beginning that messed with my head. But what things, what, what did you hear? What, what moved you? And I don't know about you. Let me just say this, because this might be something I'm not sure. Did you feel the Holy Spirit moving while you were listening to this? I felt it had me jumping over here in my spirit because I could feel the Holy Spirit moving. Yes, Raynard, what you said, what did you feel? What did you say? I hear you. I see your hand. Well, uh, first off the top, when, when I saw the name, Gamaliel, I, I, I related that to Paul. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that's the same teacher that Paul had uh, claimed. I, I'll, I'll have to look and check that, but that's what I'm... I, I can verify that that's the truth. Paul, okay. The Apostle Paul was a student of Gamaliel, mm -hmm. the Pharisee. He, mm -hmm. he said, don't do anything with them. Paul said, I'm going to kill him. And when he started killing him. Yeah, so that so, means Paul was there. Mm, could be. You know, you, I, I, we don't know if the whole assembly came or not. He never, you, we never hear mention of that. Because, uh, you know, everybody may not have been at the temple at that particular time. But, but what for sure is that he was a student of Gamaliel. And, and Gamaliel, now I, I think I think a shorthand thing is the Sadducees, they were in power, political power, but mm -hmm. the people had people power. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they listened to Gamaliel as their teacher, like 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 the disciples were listening to Jesus. Because mm -hmm. he was he was he was he was a bad, he, he was something else in terms of teaching. And so that's good. So you got you're absolutely right. I, I was I confirmed what you're saying and gave a little bit more to that. Gamaliel. I would even look up his name. Uh, I think it, I can't remember. I put it down somewhere, but when it comes up, I, I'll look for it again. But what else? Uh, this is a be uh, that beautiful reading. I'm like, Holy Spirit doing something over here? 19, the angel of the Lord opened the door. What? What is going on here? And, they, and the people like, they don't even understand. I'm seeing a lot. What y'all seeing? I'm seeing that. Um... They're recognizing that these people are not going away. You kill mm -hmm. them and they still come back and they're still mm -hmm. doing the work. Mm -hmm. And so I'm here and leave them alone. And yes. if it's of God, it will continue. If it isn't, it won't continue. Right. So they were, they were giving up. Maybe the Holy Spirit was starting to deal with their hearts. Mm. I, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm thinking as you're saying that, um, 
I believe, I don't know if he was a Pharisee. Um, was Josephus a Pharisee? What was the guy who, who visited him by night? He said, uh, he came to him by night. Nicodemus. He said, Nicodemus. And he said, you must be born again. So uh, he might have been there, but I know for a fact that this powerful teacher, Gamaliel, stopped the Sadducees from killing them. Because listen, the, the, the Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection and some other things. But the, the Pharisees did. That Gamaliel trained for Paul so much and so well that when God, the Lord Jesus Christ spoke to him, he had all the stuff start coming, coming together for him. And he wrote all these epistles and did all this kind of work because he was able, because he was trained, to pick it up and to receive it. That's what's happening with us. That was a great observation. And uh, anyone else? We got two minutes. And then we, we know we're coming back. Um, I looked up uh, Gamaliel. I have a, uh, what is this? Uh, a book called uh, Easton's Bible Dictionary, which is um, of the Greek. And But anyway, I looked up Gamaliel. That's and um, which was, here's something interesting. Uh, well, the son of a rabbi, Simeon, the grandson of a famous rabbi, Hillel, he was a Pharisee, yes. and therefore the opponent of the party of the Sadducees. That's interesting point number mm -hmm. one. Uh, yes, and yes. like he said, he was noted for his learning and was pres president of the Sanhedrin. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the questions I had asked at the very beginning, where were the Pharisees? And you did say they were there. Mm -hmm. But uh, but the Sanhedrin is comprised of both. And I don't know if that is. Uh, OK, well, no, that I, I know the answer to that. The Sanhedrin was something that uh, comprised of both Sadducees and Pharisees. So mm -hmm. but anyway, uh, he was he reigned. He, he was president during the reigns of Tiberius, Caligula and Claudius uh, and died as it said, about eight, okay, 18 years before the destruction of Jerusalem. Uh, anyway, mm -hmm. the apostles were brought wow. before the council charged with preaching the resurrection of Jesus as a mm -hmm. zealous Pharisee, Gamaliel concealed moderation and calmness, or counseled, yes. I'm sorry, moderation and calmness. By a yes. reference to well-known events, he advised them to refrain from these men. If their work or counsel was of man, it would come to nothing. Right. Um, but if it was God, they they could they could not destroy it and therefore right. ought to be on their guard lest they should be found fighting against God. And there's some other references. God. The one regarding Paul was in uh, there's a ref. Paul was one of the, his disciples. Here it is. Paul was one of his disciples. And that's in uh, it looks like Acts 22 and three. Yes. But but the 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 my observation. Yes. Talk quickly. To Mm -hmm. Is is that the men that that they had named, the Gamaliel had named, and and yes. whose um wh whose quest was uh you know was shot down. Our, their mission wasn't the same, and Gamaliel didn't right. didn't make uh, reference to what you know the difference between what the disciples like Peter and John and all of them were talking about as opposed to the mission of these other men whose mission failed. There's a big difference here. And and they, they don't even, um, the Sanhedrin or Gamaliel doesn't even address that. You mm -hmm. know, again, it's just saying they wanted to get off of this teaching, Jesus and this teaching. Yes. You know, they really wanted to get off of it. They didn't even mm -hmm. didn't want to address that at all. And, and, yeah. and, and they clumped Peter and and John and the apostles into the same group, and they don't belong in the same group. No, they, we uh, the song the children got a song. We're not like them. <laughs> They're not like us. They're not like us. So they were not like us. I, I want to. This this was so much fun. Uh, we're over time, but I want to thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone that came and participated and shared your your. Um, your special love for us. Now, I think, was it, I think Janice, I think was the first person on, who was the first person on today? Was it Janice? 
I think it was Janet. I yeah. might have been. A, yeah. a Reverend yeah. Reynard was first, of course. Yes. I think he was the only one on when I came on. So uh, I want the first shall be last. <laughs> <laughs> and the last <laughs> shall be first. Yes. Can I ask I a quick hand. question? Quick question. Can I ask a really? Uh, the email you sent us, uh, Pastor Omar, uh, made reference to uh, Acts 15, Acts 5 and 15, I'm sorry. And that's actually where I began studying today. Uh, yeah. uh, shall we pick up on, because I didn't study too much at uh, verse 17, uh, where yes, Pastor Yes, we do have to come Ray back. Had, had, okay, great. Okay. And that was my mistake. I thought I had adjusted that. Uh, but I must have I must have not adjust it. So it's okay. We we got That's there okay. and your your contribution was tremendous, even with not doing that, because you're a great Bible student. I want to thank all of y'all for here. Janice, would you lead us out and I'll close us with our salutation? Oh, uh, can I I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, can I ask that we include a healing in, in our prayer? Uh, Ms. Janice, since that was an issue that we talked about in our class today and I just have so many people in my life that are needing healing. <clears throat> you know, I, yeah. yes. Yes. You got that, Janice? Yes. And do we know how uh, our sister is doing, the lady that had the surgery? She's doing well. Cataract she's surgery? recovering. She's still got, you know, she's got to put all that stuff in her, but she's doing well. Thank you. Okay, Janice. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this Bible study thank today. You. Father God, there was so much talk about your great Holy Spirit. And um, during this talk, Lord God, it came to me, no, it was reinforced for me. You have got the study to, to have yourself approved to help you to hold on, really, mm -hmm. help you to hold on. I understand Mark 9, 24. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Especially, Reverend Raynard, as it regards healing. Mm -hmm. Because when you are in pain, living with pain, on a day-to-day -day basis, um, you have to have the word in you, I say, to be able to hold on. Yeah. Because after you have prayed and prayed and prayed for relief and you're not feeling any, speaking personally, mm -hmm. sometimes it's just, it's, it's hard to know Lord God, it, it, it's mm -hmm. hard to know, but you got to have it in you. Yeah. To know that God is a healer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God is a healer. Yes. And He is a healer, whether He heals me or not. Hmm. Still mm. healing. Yes. Thank yes. And I just have to. As I say, study the word, have enough of the word in me, know that I have uh, got to hold on, know that the Holy Spirit is leading and guiding me. Yes, yes. And would not lead me wrong. Right. So I need to pray for strength, Lord, yes. for the journey. Mm -hmm. Strength to hold on through the mm -hmm. journey. Yes. The mm -hmm. journey of healing. And there are so many. We get prayer requests every day, and there just are so many people who are experiencing pain. Mm -hmm. And I just pray that whoever is lifting them up and supporting them, mm -hmm. it is coming from or helping them to come from the perspective that he is a healer. Yes, yes. Just, just hold on, just hold on to your belief that he is a healer. Yes. Hold on to your faith. Mm -hmm. Stand on trust mm -hmm. and believe mm -hmm. and just ask to be strengthened mm -hmm. for the journey. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. Father God, I pray that each of us has 
a a network of support when we are in pain, a mm -hmm. network of support mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that we can know that we we can call on when mm -hmm. we're in pain. Yes. Because mm -hmm. when you're in pain, you need somebody's physical presence sometimes mm -hmm. to hold you up and support you. That's right. Prayers are wonderful. Prayers we can't do without. But sometimes people in pain need to feel the hand of God through your hand, mm -hmm. through your presence. So in Jesus' name, I just say these things. Mm -hmm. It was a wonderful Bible study. Mm -hmm. And we will meet again. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Father, Amen. help us to stand Amen. on faith and hold them Amen. trust. Amen. Oh, my God. Mm. Well, it's that time. We have to go on over. I appreciate all of you have shown up. We'll be back here again. Remember, if you miss our, any of the studies, they are on YouTube. You can look them up on YouTube, and you just put in Omar A. Muhammad, comma, THM. Click on it. It's going to take you to the beloved community, and you'll see all the work that we've been doing. Do me a favor. Don't forget. Keep your hands clean. And your heart pure. You cannot go wrong with that. You always win. God bless you, my beloveds. Till next time, we see you guys again in the Love in Action Bible study. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.